Today is a new day. Well, in Minecraft, not in real life. Today is the exact same day, in fact, just a few minutes after uh, when I just recorded. And I am packing up to find a nice location. Preferably something either in the Badlands, in the Highlands, in a. Uh, ooh, I need to drop one more thing, lighten the load. Um, let me see. Is there anything I could foresee using? Ender pouch? Maybe. I don't necessarily need that right now because I don't have enough to make two of them. So, I guess goodbye blaze powder. I need my pattern chest. Um, but it is the exact same day as it was uh, a few minutes ago. And as I said, just a few minutes ago, I am off to go uh, find out what lies beyond here, and, oh, yes, 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 okay, um, I could foresee not needing black wool since I only had the one in replace, uh, and, and replace that with some sugar cane, because that stuff is good. You can use it for all sorts of things. Mainly, I like to use it as a source of fuel. Biofuel, in this case, te technically, because it is renewable. And, uh, Extreme Hills was the, the, the biome I was thinking of just a minute ago that I couldn't come up with. Um, but yeah, collect some more cactus and such, as I meant to the other day when I was recording. But, um, I didn't. And uh, what I do with the the sugar sugar cane is I put it into a coke furnace, where uh, which is from Rockcraft, in which I change it from coal uh, from sugar into sugar charcoal, and it for the coal coke oven it literally requires zero fuel, just time. In this case, I guess time would be fuel. Um, but aside from that, uh, it's completely free, and I change slowly the sugar from the sugar cane into sugar charcoal, and then I put that back in to get my sugar coke, uh, sugar coke, which is equivalent to half of a coal. And since it's absolutely free, other than you know the r r uh, resources I put into getting said sugar, um, I find it to be one of the best, if not uh, the second best uh, fuel source I've ever come across. The first best being solar power because it's just, it's not easy I'd say, but it's definitely efficient because it just constantly gains power and you don't have to worry about having to put coal into the furnace the coal cook furnace and having to transfer that back through to make it into uh, sugar coke. Anyways, it seems we have come across our first... Oh, and I left my crafting table back there. It seems we've come across our first ocean. There will be many to come. Trust me. Oh, wait. Hold on. Okay, so I did take it. Okay, good. And now I have a second. Oh well, just throw that out and collect myself a bit of wood, because it is better to have something to work with as opposed to not. Also, I seem to have gathered a piece of moss. You can use this to make uh, mossy stone, as well as uh, for the sh uh, making green dye, and I thought you could uh, use this to make the... Oh, I think it's just not in any eye, but... I think it's in here, yeah, it should be, it's in the modifiers section. As you can see here, it has all the stuff I was reading off to you last episode. Except now it has some nice colors to it. And it, and it actually displays all of what you need. And actually it describes some of the things it does, like take a small hop backwards for the back pedal as I described. And the lunge when released, it sends you careening toward, uh, forward at a breakneck speed. Anyway, oh. In fact, let me. There's some things ahead that you haven't seen because, yeah, see, lethal joke weapon. It says it in the name, or in the class name. And uh, 
as you can see, some of the things I just skipped over there, like the uh, the Hammer, the Lumber X, Excavator Scythe, Cleaver Battle X, all those are later, because I do not have four iron blocks, nor do I have three seared bricks. Um, and here are some of the different alloys you can make, uh, some of the more advanced things. Cobalt and Ardite, you find those in the nether. Manilin is a... a an alloy of the two, as it says it's stronger than diamond, as you can see, it just the one piece is made, uh, just one piece of it is, uh, 1200 durability, and with the tool handle modifier of 2.5 times, a full tool of it wouldn't be 3000 durability, which is two, two and a quarter times what, uh, what diamond is. And bronze is an alloy. It's three copper to one tin. Both of those are mod items, copper. Um, and steel, there is no way to get this as a uh, as an alloy, as far as I've seen. Like I've I've tried. I you can't put coal in there to add the carbon. You can't add to any other metal that I've seen that makes it into steel. As far as I know, the only way you can get this is through railcraft and then putting it into a smeltery. And then pig iron is the last alloy. It's iron as well as blood and emerald. It takes a full emerald as far as I know, maybe maybe a little bit less, but um and it takes a little bit of blood. Blood you can get from harming enemies while they're inside the smeltery and emeralds you can get either by melting a full emerald or uh, putting villagers inside. Okay, now here's the cool part. In the tool station you saw there was like the repairing and enhancing section. Well, for... oh, hold on. Uh, I think I need to stop doing this uh, all the time, because at least at the start, because I keep no, I don't want crafting table. I keep making it uh, into the night before I actually finish any one discussion. But um, I'll continue for now. I like it. At the very least. And I guess I'll put up the wood because I need to get that back in a minute anyway. Um, torch. And back to reading. Skipping through, uh, and each of these things has a bunch of of uh, different modifiers, like how much durability a single piece would be for, like a tool rod or your your uh, pickaxe head or something. And it has a handle modifier. If you didn't know what that is, it's basically if you use this this material for making your your tool rod handle of the weapon. Uh, this is how it would affect the durability, so as it currently stands, it would turn it into a third of what it was. So say we had uh, something divisible by three easily, cactus. It has a durability of 150, so if I put a cactus sword blade for my rapier, and I got a cactus uh, crossbar, and I were to then attach my paper uh, paper handle, since it has a handle modifier of 0.3 times, it would turn that 150 into 50 durability. Then the full tool durability is if you were to make something completely out of paper, this is how much it would it would be able to uh, this is how long I'd be able to operate. Nine you know, mine nine, uh, mine nine blocks, there's a tongue twister, um, chisel nine blocks, attack nine enemies, that sort of thing. Mining speed is how fast it mines. I think stone is, is around two, I'm not sure exactly, and the mining level in this case is zero, which is the same as stone as it says in here in parentheses. Your base attack is if you were to make a, a sword out of this or some some sort of weapon, 
this is how much uh, damage you would do in this case zero because you know paper is kind of flimsy and then here's the unique thing for for most things they'll have this material trait this, this, the slimes don't that, but that's because you know using blue slime gives you a durability of 1200 the same as manilin but it has a handle modifier of 2.0 as a point as opposed to 2.4 um, but here's what's uh, here's the cool thing stonebound the longer you use it the quicker it mines reinforced is essentially unbreaking so if you make something with uh, an iron tool head or an iron tool rod or any of those things you'll get reinforced level one on it which means you'll you'll have a small chance to not uh, take da uh, durability damage and here's another material trait which I find okay it's it's especially good for weapons but it's not good in general unless you just have like cactus to spare and you you only wanted to use this for doing a little bit of damage but what you do is you would attach some sort of tool rod or something of the sort made out of cactus to your tool and you would get the jagged trait which gives it a splintering level which is in this case 1.0 I'm not sure that there's anything else that has splintering but uh, the jagged effect but what it does is it's like stone bound in the fact that the more you use it it does more of whatever this is which is in this case doing more damage so the more you use it the more damage it does it's not really useful obsidian it has a low durability and a low handle modifier but the fact that you get reinforced 3 on it is amazing. You you have unbreaking 3 automatically. Netherrack, you get stonebound as well. Alumite, which is an alloy. It's actually not with the other alloys. Um, but alumite is, I believe it's 2 iron to 5 aluminum to 2 obsidian. And it has reinforced 2, sort of averaging out the, the reinforced level on them. Iron being reinforced one, obsidian being reinforced three, al uh, aluminum not having reinforced isn't exactly taken into consideration because it doesn't have one. And you can get these slimes here uh, by doing this. It works with the blue as well, you just need to have the blue slime balls. You take four slime balls, and it has to be in this configuration. You can slide it to the left one, but it has to be slime balls on top, one dirt, one sand and it gives you this slimy mud. Slimy mud goes into your furnace, takes the standard amount of time to cook, as per most things, and you get your slime ball, or your slime crystal, I should say. And now that we've gone on that tangent, um, modifiers. So that paper back there has the material trait of writable, which gives for every, uh, for everything every one thing you make your tool out of you get an additional modifier so I have say I have in this case it looks to be an obsidian uh, obsidian pickaxe head with an iron tool rod and uh, possibly just a stone tool binding I can't quite tell from that and uh, you add a diamond to it in the tool station then you get an extra 500 durability and the mining level is automatically increased to the level of diamond which is really good if you intend to uh, say you find one diamond not enough to make uh, a, pick a, a diamond pickaxe to make uh, another portal or something of the sort what you do is you take a stone pickaxe you attach a diamond on the end and then you just use that to mine your obsidian and you're good to go. You save two diamonds. Emerald? This one I find more interesting although it's not good for low level like low durability tools because um, this will have, well, this will add 50 percent more durability and this stacks and it's automatically increased to mining level 2 which is that of iron so it can mine anything or I should say it can mine anything that iron can. Um, basically, it can mine anything except for obsidian plus, and um, 
keep in mind that these will be used up when you add them to your tool. Um, and what I find interesting is the, the balancing between diamond and emerald is so good because if you have a starting tool but you want to add a diamond to it, either for the mining level or for the 500 extra durability, I'm going to be talking about the durability here. If you have 500 extra durability, say you have that cactus, uh, fully cactus pickaxe or something of the sort, you have 150 um, durability. Now when you add a diamond, you'll have 650. But if you add an emerald, you'll only be up to 225. But if you're talking about something about like manilin, where a full tool, like a full manilin pickaxe would have 3000 durability, what's more valuable? Adding 500 extra durability, which is only one-sixth of the total durability to it, or adding half, three times more. That's, that's where the balancing comes in. Emerald is higher level, hence, you know, the difficulty of getting emerald, whereas diamond is more about low-level upgrade, as well as being able to mine obsidian and the such. Speed is where you add redstone. You can either add redstone dust or the block. You can also add them at the same time. I find this better for when you're you're uh, adding it because it adds it uh, ten, nine from the block, one from the dust, and the increments at which you uh, you upgrade go by fifties. So, as opposed to putting in, um, as opposed to putting in five blocks and five redstone separately, you just put them together and for five times, and you get the full fifty. And uh, this is multi-use. I don't think. Yeah, yeah, it appears that emerald does not stack, neither does diamond. You can only add them once, and as far as I know, you can use both of these, too. But, um, it's obviously better to use your diamond first and get emerald, because it adds an extra 500 to 50% that's being calculated. And, uh... What redstone does is it makes it faster, hence the names of the the name of the upgrade speed. And each redstone dust increases the mining speed by 0.08, which doesn't sound like much, being that stone, or being that paper has a mining speed of two, which is a lot more. Let's let's just say a lot more than this, but that's for every redstone. You're adding 50, so. By the time you're even halfway there, you've just doubled your stone pick your paper pickaxe's uh mining speed. And if you add the full fifty, then you get a full four extra, which is tripling your paper pick pickaxe's speed. And note that the type is multi use and it's stackable. So the stackable just means you can add more than one of the uh the redstone and the multi-use, which is critical here, means that you can have several of these speed modifiers. In fact, I like to load up on as many as I can. Auto repair is useful, especially when you you don't have industrial craft or um, or thermal expansion. But having those, I never use this, unfortunately. And they're oh oh they they change this. This used to be. A ball of moss. I'm not sure that it. They did change it. Yeah, it. They did. So you need nine moss plus nine cobblestone to give you nine mossy cobblestone. Combine that and you get your ball of moss, which you can then add on for that auto repair. And keep in mind that it spun, uh, that sunlight does speed it up. You can also auto smelt whatever you mine. I won't be doing this because I I know for a fact that it is not worth it, uh, having all these mods that I do, because melting it instantly smelts it um, into, say, uh, you mine one iron ore, you get one iron ingot, whereas if I were to mine that same iron ore, and I would take it back, put it in a macerator or a pulverizer, and I were to put it in a furnace for 
uh, when I have my renewable energy zero cost, I would have twice as much. It does take a bit of more of a process, but it is better. And uh, if you know the effects, it smelts blocks no matter what they are. It even, if you were to dig up uh, sand, even if it were a pickaxe with it, it would turn it instantly into glass. Uh, sets mobs on fire for three seconds. That's the same as having the fiery debuff, which is a little bit ahead right here. Fiery, adding bla uh, blaze fire. It would require 15 blaze fire and, and or three modifier slots to make the same equivalent in uh, for a weapon. <coughs> it stacks with luck, which I will get to in a second, and it is not compatible with silky, which I will also. Uh, show you in another second. And it is multi-use. And it is not stackable. So you you can add this more than once. As far as I know, it will only add an additional three seconds. Although I haven't tested and or uh, checked out any videos on where anyone's done that because in my opinion no one would be no one in their right mind would want to auto smelt anything. Um, here you have the two recipes, the one I showed you for the ball of moss, also, again, I apologize if you can hear that fuzz, uh, and then we have the lava crystal, it is four blaze rods, a bucket of lava, and four fire charges, and this says it can, it, uh, that it stacks with luck, so, um, encrusting lapis on it basically adds fortune the fortune enchant to it, and this, I'm telling you, this takes a lot, like, you you thought you had plenty of lapis left over? Well, you're going to need all of it, because it requires 450 lapis to make it fortune 3. However, every 150 does add an incremental fortune level, so 150 is fortune 1, 300 is fortune 2, 450 is fortune 3. And it also is equivalent to looting if you put it on some sort of weapon. Uh, it has a chance, basically, that saying you have to get it to a certain amount before it, it reaches uh, the, the first level of fortune. Um, look at that. Sometimes adds extra luck to the... Yeah, basically it's just summarizing what fortune and or looting does. So basically, you'll get more if you mine uh, materials. That doesn't uh, that doesn't work for things with uh, ores that just come out as ores. Like if you were to mine iron, it wouldn't give you two iron ore. It would just give you the one. But if you were to mine redstone, and that that fortune three was on there, you would most likely like there's a a very high chance that you would get a lot of redstone. Generally, I get about 12, 12 redstone per block, I'd say. Maybe 9. And also, like the fire, uh, the auto smelting enchant it is not compatible with silky, single use. You cannot add, like, up to fortune 6. That would be insane and also very, very broken. Sharpness is just using quartz. So you can get this fairly easily in the nether, especially if you're a bat, but you know it is in in demand all the time. Uh, it increases damage and uh, if you have the rapiers like I do, uh, the rapiers such as I do, then you know that it has less of an effect because you know the damage is low. I'm assuming this raises a percentage and it is multi-use and it is stackable, so you can have multiple levels, I believe it goes up in increments of 48, 24, I can't remember off the top of my head. Fiery, which I could use that blaze power for, in fact I probably should have. Uh, but basically it just makes the enemy set on fire. It, the first level only makes it run for one second, but it is multi-use, so you can you can add several levels of this to get several seconds worth of flame. And the product, the next one, is really interesting. Uh, most games, I should 
say most uh, most roguelikes and dungeon crawlers have some sort of health steal. But I'll think of necrotic, uh, which is got, which is had from this necrotic bone killed. Whether skeletons might drop this, it's a very low chance. It's like a uh, two times probably the chance of getting that. Uh, two times the chance of getting a wither skull. So this is more common, but it is still rare. Um, it gives you life steal, one heart per bone. So you can add this. It says per bone. I'm not sure why it says that, because it says it's single use. Although stackable, I might have been misleading you, stackable might be where it can be used more than once. Um, let me see. Stackable now. Um, to use and stackable. Single use, not stackable. I'm not sure. I think for the moment I'm going to say that stackable is yes, considering it says one heart per bone, and it says it's single use, meaning you can only put one necrotic bone on at a time. Now here's one of the useful enchants, especially for things like redstone and the like. Unless you have fortune 3 already, in which case it's not as good, but this is fairly easy to get. Um, it's aluminum brass, or gold, depending on what it is, not like what you choose, around some string, and it gives you silk touch for your pickaxe. It is single use, can't stack, and it's not compatible with luck or the auto smelting, as it says there. Um, and it does the same as silk touch would do, it automatically harvests the blocks as raw ore blocks, so redstone ore would generally give you redstone, uh, redstone dust as a as a product when you broke it, but with Silky it would give you the redstone ore. Most of you know how Silk Touch works. Silky Claw, you need four of them. They're made by surrounding either a gold nugget or an aluminum brass nugget. Aluminum brass being, um, oh, I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it's one aluminum to every three copper, or maybe it's three aluminum to every one copper. I can't remember. I think it's three aluminum to every copper. But you put string all around it. You need four nuggets and 24 string around one emerald. So it's not the easiest to get, but you do uh, you do get quite a bit of worth out of that one emerald, even if it's not mul uh, multiplying your durability by 1.5. Um, reinforced. This this has the same effect as if you were making that same tool out of obsidian. You add an obsidian plate, this does appear to be an obsidian pickaxe, and you add this to uh, to increase its durability. I don't know if it actually directly increases durability, or if it's just the fact that it does add the reinforced level 1, 2, 3 plus. Um, and it, as you can see it adds reinforced and it stacks with other levels of reinforced, so you can have a uh, a, a fully obsidian pickaxe with reinforced level 3, and you can, uh, no, I should say a, a, an obsidian pickaxe head, and everything else made out of paper. So you have as many modifiers to add reinforced as possible, and you have now a very, very low chance of actually taking durability, although the, the durability will be extremely low. Only about 30. And you can add knockback. This is only applicable to uh, weapons. I think you can add it to tools, but honestly, I see no reason. It would only be if you if you wanted to add it to a hammer or something, because a hammer is a tool, not a weapon. Um, attaching the piston makes it do extra knockback. Um, beheading makes. Uh, it uses an ender pearl and an obsidian. The obsidian, I think, is uh, just to signify that it's like end, like the obsidian pillars, and um, the same with the ender pearl. Like it sort of teleports the head off of the target, and it just drops e uh, enemy heads more often. Bane of arthropods, as you can see, that's a pleasant icon there. Um, 
basically it it adds bane of arthropods by uh, by adding fermented spider eyes and it adds an extra one to two hearts of damage for every level but it only applies to spiders because it is bane of arthropods smite is the same thing except it does it on on undead such as skeletons and zombies and you get the uh, the consecrated soil here by making graveyard soil made with a single block of dirt, a rotten flesh, and what appears to be sugar. And uh, you smelt that into your consecrated soil. Now here are the two, technically three, that I find are the best. Just because they allow you to have unlimited durability as long as you can create power. This electric it allows you to, it, it does take a bit of doing to get because industrial craft has ramped up its difficulty in creating things even as simple as batteries and circuits, but it does, it does definitely pay for itself quickly because say you have a fully, uh, fully paper pickaxe, except the pickaxe head is cobalt. This is my favorite tool because it mines quickly and it has as many modifiers to add speed and this electric effect as possible. And so what the electric effect does is it lets you charge them with Industrial Craft 2 sources of power such as solar panels, like uh, put it in a bat box and you get, you get it charged up with solar energy or coal energy, whatever you want, but I prefer solar. And this is this is very sad, but it, it's going to be removed in 1.7. I honestly have no idea why, and I'm sad for it, but I might as well enjoy it as long as I can. And flux is the same, except it, it you can use it using a flux capacitor or alternatively your your leadstone energy cell. It does take for the the flux capacitor, a hardened flux capacitor, although I have very recently, I've tested this, not, not in this let's play, but I have tested, you can actually use other flux capacitors, I've, I've used a, a tuberous flux capacitor, it's the simplest, and it only holds 16,000 energy worth of charge, but it will work. And it, it shows up on here a little strange because of the textures. But uh, basically, it would make the pickaxe a little bit longer, almost as if it looked like it had saw blades on it, sort of. Electric saw blades. This just adds this on the handle. It doesn't really do anything. The flux capacitor looks cooler. But honestly, I use... Uh, I use IC2 more because it has renewable energy, and you can do the same with the leadstone energy cell, quite, quite easy, quite a bit easier than a hardened flux capacitor. Although I don't know that it requires a uh, hardened flux capacitor. And if you want to add more modifiers, like say you have that that pick of yours, whatever it may be, iron with obsidian head, stone tool binding and you want more modifiers, then all you have to do is add a single diamond and a block of gold, and you can also add a wither star, a nether star, I should say, as an equivalent. You can use both. It doesn't matter, as long as you just have uh, one of them to spare. And also, these are jungle spiders. I better arm myself. I guess I'll wait, because seems to still be night. Can't see any enemies right off. There are jungle spikes as you saw. And I think this will end this episode because as you can see, I've already made it through already two more episodes, and I will see you guys next time. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. See ya.